what is up guys and of course welcome to another episode of who was really better now before we go to this episode i do want to say that i haven't been able to record this episode for roughly three weeks i've been very sick actually I'm, I, and unfortunately uh, i've been coughing quite a lot and simply haven't been able to do longer recordings and i really felt that the stop pause variant wasn't necessarily that good but i will be coughing throughout this episode most likely and um well, that's basically it, but I really, really want to get this show on the road. I do miss not talking about Pokemon and how great they really can be. And talking about greatness, Grumpy vs. Hypno is probably as good as it gets. It's simply up there with the, the Latias vs. Latios. It's a rivalry nobody want to talk about because it really isn't necessarily that exciting. But they're kind of good. Um, I myself, I liked Spoink for the longest time, and in Generation 3, it was I kind of been between 10 and 12 somewhere down down the line there when i played ruby for the first time i had grumping on my team it was definitely not, not a good pokemon but i was under the affection that psychics are good so grumping was used but grumping yeah it's a lacklustering pokemon much like hypno actually but they're definitely not useless they are with perks and uh, we're gonna of course as always talk about the oregon theme Hypno has a really strong fan base, and uh, it has a lot of really strong niches around it. It actually has a very interesting mood pool, which is rather broad and rather excessive. It's whether or not Grand Peaks overarching theme can be better, and that's what we're gonna find out. So let's talk about the overarching theme, stats, and mood pool to find out which one of these two fat, specially defensive psychic types that really are, of course, better. We're gonna start off with Hypno. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is actually Hypno. Now, it's an interesting Pokemon, to say the least, because... Well, it's kind of bulky, isn't it? Uh, I really want to force it. The Psychic type isn't necessarily a good defensive typing. We're resistantly fighting a Psychic, which is you know, fine. Not that many things weak to Psychic. Uh, or, I mean, resistant to Psychic or fighting. So, covering both is definitely good. Uh, but then we're weak to Bug, Dark, and Ghost. Uh, bug and Ghost is what it is. You're weak to Pivoting in that aspect. You're weak to Pursuit Trapping, which is always tough. But being a weak to Ghost, I think, is kind of... the the last straw for the camel's back and that's because ghost overall has really no issues we have our immunity with normal types and then we have what i only can say is um um the dark type to do resist that other else than that it actually hits neutrally against everything so being hit super effectively by it means that it's always a viable option to have ghost type moves because there really aren't as many switching to it and being weak to it makes that aspect even worse uh, luckily for Hypno though, it has the stats to kind of pull those punches very well. If you look upon the stats, we have 85 in his HP, which is definitely above average. 73 in both offensive stats, which is mm, not that good. Um, it's absolutely below average and it will largely not do a significant amount of damage ever. Defensive, yeah, I wouldn't say that. 70 base, it's defense, it's... That's the thing though, 85 in HP do help its overall bulk. But like I said, being weak to both U-Turn and Pursuit, which are physical, do damage its viability somewhat. The special defense here, though, is just up there. You will not hurt this Pokemon, rather, or rarely, especially defensively. It's It does pull that off quite right. And that was 65 in its speed, which I wouldn't say it's bad. It's just, it's somewhere in between what I would say usable and unusable for different roles. It's fine for a supportive Pokemon. It's bad for an offensive Pokemon, and it's bad for a trick room user so it's a supportive pokemon at best but yeah it can pull off i guess any roles it does not exist in move pool which is going to cover all, all of us or very soon but yeah the speeds are somewhere in between good or bad depending on what you want to use it for uh, its abilities are also the same thing they're they're good but definitely bad uh, we have forewarn which do warn you if your opponent can do super effective damage towards you if you carry shadow ball anything like that it will warn you about this Inner Focus, which does make sure that you can't get flinched. <coughs> so Lopin, I got nothing on this Pokemon, but yeah. Um, it means the Dark Pulses can't flinch you or anything like that, but I wouldn't say that's a viable thing for Hypno. And then you have Insomnia, which gives you immunity to um, being asleep. But I guess the best ability, if I have to choose, is between for Forewarn and Insomnia. And I probably prefer Forewarn, just to kind of gauge the Pokemon's movesets. But overall, yeah, you don't use Hypno for its abilities, that's for sure. So, with that said, we're going to cover its attacks, because it actually learns a lot of things, and it's actually really, really cool due to it, because if you use Hypno, you use it for the move pool, because it's cool. 
is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, <laughs> while we're covering that, uh, we have of course Future Sight, which is great. Um, it can be like slow king use such, of course, with um, Future Sight Assault Vest. There were Nasty Blood, Nightmare, you're never gonna use that. Switcheroo, which is great, because that means you can use your choice specs or band, and then, of course, trick that item away. Because if you want to do that with this Pokemon, yeah, a band probably, you know, the choice items is probably gonna do to make sure that work. And then we have the likes of Hypnosis, we have Disable, uh, which can be great, we have Poison Gas, Meditate, Headbutt, Psych Up, which can be used with C to be able to recover of course but I wouldn't say that it's a viable aspect but you do get it and that's well that's all fine and good isn't it um, other than that though I would definitely say that you know it's last moople spots aren't necessarily that interesting let's see I actually missed the synchronize and stuff like that kind of want to show you guys what it gets uh, like I said psych up is very good because it means if anything, that you can, like I said, recover with C normal, which is, it's cool, it's good. Sigurois, um, if this is probably the worst abuser of that, but I want to mention that it gets it. I think it's cool that it actually allows you to get that. Uh, other than that, uh, when it comes to regular TMs, it actually has an excessive move pool, I would say. Um, first come to mind here is, of course, Call Mind, which is awesome. Um, it does mean you can boost yourself besides Nasty Plot. And besides that, you know, Sunny Day is up there, Hyper Beam, you don't want to use that. We have Screen, Light Screen, and Reflect, you can go for a, that type of set also. We have Shadow Ball, Brick Break, Torment, uh, Low Sweep, Focus Blast, which is a very good thing to have. Um, the reason one would kind of enforce Focus Blast is because um, um, uh, Psychic and Fighting type combination is probably one of the more complete combination because the ones that are resistant to uh, Psychic, such as Steel types and Dark, are absolutely weak to fighting. So being able to have that is... It's a strong merit to have Focus Blast. It's required for almost every Psychic type. It's the reason Pokemon such as Mesprit aren't better, because they can't do anything versus Steel types besides hidden power. And they don't hit their harm in 120 base power, yeah. It misses, but when it lands, it lands. Just unfortunate that it move or the special attack is so low. Uh, we also have Thunder Wave, which is significant for it, because it does mean that it can disrupt teams. Grass Knob was a decent filler. And Trick Room and Dazzling Gleam, which... Yeah, Trick Room, like I said there, is an aspect you want to be able to kind of use that with Hypno, but it's, it will not be your most important move. Uh, now we come to the Egg Moves, it does get a few things right. Um, we have Barrier, which is basically um, what Iron Defense is. We rarely talk about Barrier, but that's a move. Don't forget it. We also have assist, which can be useful, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend um, better um, say to use it. And we have roleplay, which does copy the ability of your opposing Pokemon. The elemental punches, flatter, which is not annoying at all. Um, Psycho cut, which shouldn't be used. Guard swap, which basically changes your defenses with your opposing Pokemon. Uh, we also have power split, which can be viable. <coughs> but um, yeah, it's it's just an aspect to be, to be at best. And then we have Psychic Terrain, which is... This is one of the few Pokemon that gets it, and I guess it's kind of nice that it has that thing going for it. Um, however, on a tutor move, things start to look a little more interesting. Um, with the likes of Single Beam, Low Kick, Elemental Punches again, together with Magic Coat, Foul Play, which does mean that this can be a Pokemon that plays defensively with Toxic, uh, without risking, of course, being able to force be having damage output. Uh, we hold have Snow, don't use that. Drain Punch, Focus Punch, Trick... Uh, Magic Room, Recycle, Snatch, Skill Swap, Telekinesis, Alley Switch, or Ally Switch. And then, when it comes to Transfer Move, which stands out here, there really aren't that many things. Our Counter, Seismic Toss, which is quite right. And then we have Curse from previous generations, go with Sap Cannon, Submission. But one thing that doesn't actually are written here on Cerebi, because you guys know I'm using Cerebi, is that also get Wish. It gets that in Pokemon XD to get with Bat and Pass, and that's something that needs to kind of be mentioned here. Hypno are able to wish pass. This means that this Pokemon do cover a role of very, very defensive rarity. Um, first thing come to mind, I really have to enforce, is that this means you can use a Seismic tos Toxic combination with Wish and Protect, or with either um, 
Foul play, seismic toss, and wish protect. It can be whatever you like. It's just that it doesn't have a force to run any kind of offensive stat investment to be able to be effective, which is not only rare, <coughs> but it also is a good viability to the Pokemon itself, which clearly can attack. Shansi and Blissey have the same issues. While they are more defensively capable than Hypno, it's just great that it has a layer to it to not be forced to be running offensive stats because it doesn't have enough offensive stats to use. So, yeah, like I said, the choice size are there. I should mention it also gets Belly Drum. Uh, I've seen a C Hypnosis set together with um, Belly Drum to be able to not only sleep your opponent, get a speed boost, and then Belly Drum, and then use Drain Punch or Send Headbutt. Um, any feel and move works here. Though that combination is fine, there are very few Pokemon that resist that, come first to mind, any other Psychic type do parry that set, but I think it works. Um, but yeah, overall, I think Hypno is an interesting Pokemon and a lot of cool layers to it, but also at the same time there are a few things here that aren't, like, it's clearly <coughs> made for a different meta and it absolutely isn't um, made for this generation whatsoever. But I think it's a significant Pokemon with good defensive capabilities and good supporting capabilities. So while it isn't the strongest Psychic type, it still is far among not the worst. It's definitely up there as one of the more interesting defensive Pokemon and should, in all aspects, really be celebrated for it, if you ask me. So with that said, that's Hy Hypno covered. So let's see how Grumpy is faring. So... Looking at Grumpy, they really aren't that much apart from Hypno. Stat-wise, they really are complementing each other quite well. And in my honest opinion, it just is defined of what you really need. Grumpy has less HP of 80. It absolutely has no attack to use. 45, yeah, mmm. Mmm. That's, that's, uh, that's Pichu level of, of damage output. They really aren't that interesting. 65 defense, yeah, this is even worse coming out of being Pursuit Trap or U-Turn. This should be stated. No matter how we go about it, Hypno is a better defensive Pokemon than Grumpig. Uh, special attack, 90, yeah, it's usable. It's absolutely usable. While 90 isn't really high, it still is that one call mine away from actually being viable. So it's cool seeing Grumpig has that together with a, pretty much the same special defense, not far off. But like I said, less HP means that it's less bulkier. Then we have the speed tier, 80. This is where I start to kind of level between what I want to say. 80 is absolutely not bad, and in Generation 3 it was fine. It's now what I would say that there are Pokemon faster. It's absolutely no use in the Trick Room whatsoever, or at least shouldn't be. But it's absolutely able to outspeed certain Pokemon. It can be used as a possible wall-breaking possibility. And the reason I say that is because it got fine abilities here. That's what is probably Grumpig's biggest merits versus Hypno, and that is that it has three ability while two being viable. Own tempo makes you not confused. Not necessarily that interesting. Thick Fat of Gluttony, however, is very good. We're gonna cover Thick Fat first because it was its most viable ability until this generation in generation seven. Thick Fat makes sure you get two more assistances. You're being immune to what I believe freeze and burn, which is good. Um, don't quote me on that, I think it had something like that, but if anything, Thick Fed do make sure that you can't or you get resistant hits from fire moves and ice moves. And being the combination of special defense, yeah, I mean, this is a Pokemon that absolutely switch in on offensive fire types and ice types that are specially based. Cure in black might be working here, but regular Cure him, mm mm. Even Cure him white is gonna have an issue versus Grumpig. If their ability to nullify the Thick Fed, ah, oh, that's tough though. But yeah, that stated, it's a viable Pokemon. Nowadays, it's absolutely used to be able to check Pokemon such as Lightpart in the lower tiers, but Grumpig overall has also Gluttony. reason Gluttony is such a big thing this generation is because we got introduced to berries that recover 50% of our HP. Gluttony makes sure that these move activates faster, which means, in theory, that um, Grumpig has now reliable recovery. It didn't have that actually till this generation, barring, of course, Psychop. But yeah, it's not witch passing by any means, but it's absolutely a thing to be considered. So, overall, those are two abilities are very good, and it only defines which one you want to use. I myself really like to use Assault Vest very enough grumping and being super offensive. It works. It absolutely requires 
opponent to switch around a lot, but it also works with a different kind of move. It also learns Belch this generation, which only makes the Glutony aspect that much more interesting. So, with that said, let's see what this Pokemon do learn. Because it does learn actually quite a lot of things, and I think it's interesting due to that. Um, so, first come to mind. Um, via the dance, make your opponent confused, cool. Belch. Which is a good C move, but also, uh, just, there aren't really that many Pokemon that are Psychic types that learn Poison type move. And definitely not that strong. Uh, splash, C Splash, boost yourself by 3 at, in attack. It's... <clears throat> it's not usable, but it's fun to use. Side Wave, which is fine for a Poison type, um, Psychic type. Uh, then, other significant move that I would mention, you know, it gets Confused Ray 2, which kinda... Give the middle finger the theater dance, I guess. Magic Hope, which is fine. Par Gem, which is weird. Not man many Psychic type gets that. And then we have Bounce, which, like I said before, while the physical aspect isn't there, we have Bounce. Then we have Psy Shock, Calm Mind, which is great for it because it does mean it can boost itself somewhat. We have Taunt here, much like Hypno. We have the dual screen and light screen and reflect, which is awesome. Uh, Shadow Ball, Brick Break, and much like Hypno, we have Focus Blast. Like I said, it's a very, very important combination to have. Seeing that it gets that just makes Grumping that much more better, because it means the Steel type aren't necessarily well in this Pokemon, at least not that effective. Also, Energy Ball, we have Charge Beam, which makes, well, give you another layer to boost yourself up, I guess. Fun Away, which is fine. Bulldoze, which should never be used. Grass Knot, and much like Hypno, we have Trick Room, but trust me, we do not use Grumpy for Trick Room, it's just not necessary. And then we come to the Egg moves, it gets Future Sight and Trick, Amnesia, Mirror Coat, Skill Swap, Whirlwind. So yeah, this Pokemon get Face, which is kind of cool. Uh, Endure and Signal Beam. Now I kind of want to enforce and talk a little bit about this, because it means that in theory it is much like... Um, <laughs> Or what do you call it? Um, Hypno with Assault Fest. It actually is able to pull a future side roll, much like a Pokemon Sloking, but this time we have a lot more special attack, which means it gets much more annoying. Future side is just tremendous in that aspect, and seeing a Grumpy gets that means the Thick Fat Assault Fest variant is significantly better than Hypno's variant of that. But other than that, when it comes to the Tutor moves for Ultra Sun and Moon, really aren't anything worthwhile. We have Icy Wind, which stands out together with Heal Bell, which is always going to be considered. Heal Bell, of course, another way of actually get yourself HP up if you want to use that to get it with the like of a Normalium C. And then we have Laser Focus, which nobody used, but we have one thing that stands out <coughs> besides my cough, and that is Recycle. Recycle means that you actually can recover yourself quite a lot. And it makes Grump Pig a lot more interesting, if you're asking me, because all of a sudden we not only have a reliable recovery, we can keep recovered with that. While you do for the cell to be at least below 50%, just that the accessibility for Grump Pig is there is just interesting in all ways, because all of a sudden, between generation 6 and 7, I would say this is what boosts Grump Pig quite a lot, because before this, it was a niche pick, and now it's in PU a quite viable pick for the threats in there, and with that special attack, it are able to do stuff. When it comes to transfer move, there really aren't that many things stand out. I should mention Seismic Toss, but quite frankly, I wouldn't recommend it. It's not worthwhile. <laughs> also a natural gift, which is kind of cool. But yeah, don't use anything here. Um, I guess you'd mention Mud Slap as a C move, but you will never use that Tectonic Rage. There is just no way you will use that. But overall, though, I think Grumpig are well, a lot like Hypno, but offensively, offensively better, defensively more capable of recovery itself. It isn't as supportive. Heal Bell, while being a thing that could help it quite a lot to support its team, it's nowhere near what Wish is doing. And also, we don't get foul play, which means that you need to have some type of investment if you don't want to go for Seismic Toss. And if you go for Seismic Toss, well, then you can't have Gluttony, which means you can't be as defensive as you want to. So it's it's a double-edged sword. I definitely feel that the best set in Born with uh, Grand Pig today is the Gluttony set, and then you need to be invested somewhere because you need to do the damage. Toxic is, while a viable option, not necessarily that good. Psychic and Focus Blast is all you need, and I even see the combination of Fight MC because Grumpig are able to do damage. And it should do. It's a significant good Pokemon. It's definitely got 
better if anything this generation. So what this matchup really boils down to is which one of these defensive Pokemon you really want to get and actually use in game. And yeah, that's the thing. I could argue for both of these, and I think both of them being for being a special defensive psychic type to do in both of that role really well. They really are up there with what I would say Mushana and stuff like that. While they don't like or they both like healing wish, they're still able to actually help their team quite well and are defensive enough to do well. So which one would I prefer? Which one do I think is better? Well, Hypno has Wish, which makes that Pokemon very, very good to support his team quite well. It absolutely helps that it has dual screen, that it has foul play, and that it has seismic toss. That's not gonna go away. But for my money, and for Generation 7 significantly changing like it does, that also means that Grumpig, in my own opinion, got a lot better. And, well, for me, Grumpig is absolutely the winner. And it has a lot to do with that Grumpig are having reliable recovery. And it is speedier, which means Pokemon needs to outspeed it. And it can fill a role of actually being offensive. Night special attack, while not the highest, it's definitely high enough for some aspect. In PU, it has a viability. It has a better ability overall than Hypno, which means it has more layers to it. In League concept, which we haven't barely talked about, I probably use a Pokemon that has different abilities to be able to pinpoint in certain matchup. I don't believe Hypno has that aspect. It's always going to be a Wish Passer. It's not necessarily a good Belly Drummer. And it just mm, keeps piling up of issues. I think the main issue is that it can't hit something very well. And, well, Grumpy are able to do so, and that's great. Overall, though, like I said, I can see both sides of this argument. I think both are good enough to be considered for your team, but if I have to choose, Grumpig, for my money, is significantly better than Hypno and why it wins this matchup. So, with, of course, that said, what do you guys think? Which Pokemon do you think, of course, better between these two? Write it down in comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel, because why not? I haven't said anything forever, and still haven't coughed in this recording, which is awesome. But overall, I just want to say thank you guys for watching as always, and I'll see you next week with this matchup.